Hello, good evening, and welcome to another edition of Health Matters on Liberty TV. Amina Maza, thank you for joining us. Our uh, guest for today is Dr. Amina Asani. Welcome, Doctor. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me on your show. So, today on Health Matters, we're going to be discussing infertility. So, Doctor, what is infertility? Uh, infertility can be defined as the inability of a couple mm -hmm. to achieve conception after one year of regular and unprotected sexual intercourse. Okay. Regular being a frequency of three times or more per week. Okay. However, for women of advanced ages, that's 35 years and above, yes. and women who have been diagnosed of any reproductive disease in the past which can impair their, con their chances of conceiving, mm -hmm. for them we advise them to seek the fertility expert yes. after six months of regular and unprotected sexual intercourse with their mm -hmm. partner. Now this is because a woman is born with all the eggs that she will use throughout her lifetime. Okay. And as she ages, the quantity of these eggs decline. As a matter of fact, the percentage for pregnancy rates for women at 30 years of age and less than that mm -hmm. is 70 to 75 yes. percent. Bearing in mind that a woman's peak fertility rate is at 25 years of age. Okay. So as she grows older, at 30 to 35 years of age, the fertility declines to about 60 percent. And mm -hmm. by the time she's above See, um, she's above 35 years of age, the fertility declines to 50 So basically, the younger, the better. Yes. The chances yeah. of being able to conceive is yes. higher when you're younger, and then it's okay. So what are there types of infer are there types of infertility? Yes. Infertility can be categorized into three. Oh, okay. Primary infertility, secondary infertility, and infertility of unexplained cause. So the primary infertility is infertility in women who have never been pregnant before mm, okay. but then they find it difficult to achieve conception. This can be as a result of hormonal imbalance or mm -hmm. as a result of reproductive diseases that has not been diagnosed yet. Mm. Now secondary infertility is infertility in a woman who has been pregnant before irrespective of the outcome of the pregnancy. So whether it was terminated voluntarily yes. whether it ended in a miscarriage or she delivered the baby alive it doesn't really matter in this women they have been pregnant before but now they find it difficult, difficult to achieve conception and then the last one which is the interesting one and i feel so many people will be interested to hear this is there is actually infertility of unexplained cause so which means that this couple who fall into this category have been tested they have undergone comprehensive medical checks, checking the tubes of the woman, checking the ovaries of the woman to rule out different diseases yes. of the reproductive tract, checking the seminal fluid analysis of the man to make sure there is adequate production and motility and morphology of the, of the sperm. And then they have also been engaged in sexual intercourse with their partner mm -hmm. for at least two years, but still there is no discernible cause. And there is nothing wrong with the two of them. And there's nothing wrong with the two of them. Now, in um, couples who fall into this category, we advise them that they shouldn't wait. Because, you know, come on in this region, you yes. wait, hoping that pregnancy would come, but it might not come. But when you seek the fertility expert, they will explain to you better the treatment options that are mm -hmm. available for you. And the earlier, like you said, the better. Yes. So it makes it easier that way. Okay, so um, what exactly are the reasons for infertility? Well, to courses? understand that, you would have to understand that um, reproduction has to do with the interaction and integrity of both the male and female reproductive system. So that means both of them have an equal role to play mm -hmm. for them to achieve conception. And then this has to do with the release of pre-ovulatory oocytes every pre within the period of ovulation. So that means the woman must release eggs every month during her ovulation period. This also involves the production of adequate spermatozoa mm -hmm. by the husband and then the tubes of the fallopian tubes of the woman must be patent to be able to transfer sperm and the egg that has mm -hmm. been fed, um, that has been fused together to the ampullary part of the fallopian tube where fertilization takes place and then finally there will be subsequent transportation of that um, embryo, the cleaving embryo, through the endometrial lining of the woman in the uterus, as where baby stays, so that um, implantation and development can take place. Okay. So to understand this, now we can talk about the etiology of 
male and female factor infertility. Yes. Male factor infertility accounts for about 35% of cases of infertility. Okay. And this can be as a result of pre-testicular causes causes and post testicular causes now this topic is really broad so I'll be speaking about the testicular causes today okay now the testicular causes refers to condition that affects the production of sperm so we call it abnormal spermatogenesis okay. now this can be as a result of childhood mumps you know the mom's mom so the viral infection in mumps which is the inflammation of the parotid gland mm -hmm. one of the complications of that if left untreated is mumps orchitis that is the inflammation of the testis in men now when a, a, a child is infected mumps can do that yes when a child is infected with mumps the mumps virus attacks the testicular gland causing an inflammation of the testicles mm -hmm. now subsequently there will be an increase in the intratesticular pressure in the testicles and as a result of that increase in pressure mm. there would be what is called a pressure induced testicular atrophy which means that there will be shrinking in the size of the testicles and okay. when there is a shrinkage in the size of the testicles obviously there will be abnormal production of sperm yes. and then the quality of the sperm as well would not be okay for conception okay. so but this is mostly seen although it's rarely the cause of complete sterility like complete infertility in men yes. but men who have had mom's virus as a child can actually have low sperm count when they grow older can this be avoided though yes it can be avoided if because it's an infection that you get through droplets and okay. direct contact yes so to avoid it you would have to treat your child on time so when you notice it you know the habit of going to the pharmacy instead of going to the to buy over-the-counter medications mm -hmm. you should come to the yes someone who knows how to treat it so that they can treat it properly and then children will not come down with this yes another um, cause of testicular factor for infertility in men is congenital cryptochidism this is called undescended testis now it's the absence of one or both testes from the scrotum okay this usually occurs inside the uterus of the mother so it's when the fetus is still it's developing still now during embryogenesis the testes develop the development of the testes starts in the abdomen of mm -hmm. the early embryo so it remains high up in the abdomen till about seven months of age when the um, till about seven months of age then it descends through the in inguinal canal which is a passage in the lower abdomen yes it, through the inguinal canal into the scrotum now for that movement to take place there are certain factors that influence it two hormones actually mm -hmm. the anti-mullerian hormone which is a very important factor in male reproductive yes. organ and then the testosterone which is the male sex hormone now this two hormone if there is a deficiency or an instance insensitivity of this hormone it can lead to um, abnormality in spermatogen formation of the spermatogenic tissue and when there is abnormality in the formation of the spermatogenic tissue there would be reduce in the production and yes, also damage to the testes as well now another thing is the temperature in the abdomen is different from the temperature in the testes Mm -hmm. The temperature in the testes is a few degrees cooler than that in the abdomen. So the prolonged exposure, that's for women who do not notice on time, because mm -hmm. we expect that you bring your, by six months they make the diagnosis, maybe by a year or two they do the surgery, which is called okidopexy. But people who do not know, who are not aware, maybe leave this period, this condition for a very long time and then the temperature there damages the testes and then as a result of that it can reduce, it can cause the decline or decrease in production of sperm the quality of the sperm the motility of the sperm and morphology of the sperm oh, okay so this is for men yes this is what for about men. women for women there are different factors as well the uterine factor which has to do with uterine fibroids which is very common in this region the yes. cervical factors which can be as a result of a cervical stenosis which is the sticking together of this of the cervix of the woman mm -hmm. either as a result of procedures that have been done there before and also there is tubal factor now the tubal factor is more common in this region because women usually most people have sexually transmitted diseases, diseases. and they do not treat it properly okay so if they don't treat it properly sexually transmitted diseases caused by gonorrhea syphilis mm -hmm. and um, chlamydia have been linked to infertility in women 
because they cause a blockage of the fallopian tube. Yes. So as a result of a blockage of the fallopian tube, the fallopian tube is really needed for transportation mm. of the sperm and the egg to the ampullar part of the um, fallopian tube where fertilization takes place. Mm -hmm. So when there is an obstruction there, the sperm cannot pass and nothing can happen. So fertilization cannot take place. Yes. And also, in women with uterine fibroid, the fibroid, especially the ones, the intramural and the submucous fibroid, the intramural fibroid is the one that occurs in the muscular layer of the uterus, the muscular wall of the uterus. And also, the submucous one is the one that grows underneath the endometrial lining. Now, the endometrial lining of the uterus is where the baby stays. Mm -hmm. So, the, in, the, the larger the size of the fibroid, it can distort the endometrial lining, making it to take place in the uterus mm -hmm. the um, embryo has to pass through into the um, endometrial lining for it to implant yes. for development to take place but when there is a huge fibroid it can distort it and also cause um, lack of implantation in the uterus and there's one very interesting disease of the female reproductive tract called endometriosis okay. now this is underdiagnosed because women when they present with it, people just assume that it is lower abdominal pain yes. and menstrual pain. So most times they take paracetamol and they don't present on time. And by yes. the time they present, they it, trying to have it a would baby. be severe that to correct it would be very difficult. Now endometriosis occurs in any part of the female reproductive system. It is so notorious that it can even happen in the intestine. So if it happens in the ovaries, it's called endometriomas mm -hmm. and it reduces the quality and quantity of the egg so if the quality of the egg is not good there's a risk for miscarriage and even yes. to achieve conception would be bad would be very terrible then if it happens in the tubes in the fallopian tubes or in the endometrial lining it causes what we call adhesions now adhesions are scar-like formations on the tissues of the endometrium and the tubes mm. so when this happens sometimes these organs can stick together yes and then when they stick together it will be difficult for anything to pass through so the embryos coming in cannot pass through the fertilization process in the fallopian tube cannot pass yes. through so everything is shut down and the woman cannot achieve conception mm -hmm. it's so bad that some people can have all at the same time so that's when they present late so they can have endometriomas in the ovaries they can have it in the fallopian tube and they can have it and so in cases like that mm -hmm. it's usually very difficult to achieve conception on your own so you would need to seek a fertility expert okay so what are the risk factors of infertility well uh, age okay because with an increase in age even for men studies have shown that with an increase in age there's a damage to the dna of the sperm oh, leading okay. to but leading to low sperm production and abnormal spermatogenesis and all but unlike women men can still to an extent yes fertilize and um, get a woman pregnant because they can produce sperm at interval mm -hmm. so over time they might be able to correct yes. this issue but for women as women age the eggs age and there is no production of new eggs yeah. so you ha only have what you have what in you your reserve had. yes so for that that can and then we age it's also yes it's going down okay. so that can have so and um Social factors as well, such as smoking. Smoking has been linked to damage of the cervix and damage of the fallopian tubes. So mm. women who are heavy smokers might find it difficult as well to achieve conception. Alcohol intake as well mm -hmm. has been linked to first trimester miscarriages. So in women, that's why they say avoid alcohol, yes. avoid in hair. So alcohol too has been linked to that. Then multiple sexual partners. Mm. As a result of that, women are exposed to sexually transmitted diseases, diseases and that can lead to blockage of the fallopian tubes and all other diseases of the reproductive system. So um, how is it, I, um, I understand that sometimes it's difficult, it's more difficult to, di um, to diagnose ladies than the, fee the males mm. but how is it diagnosed generally for both male and female? Diagnosis of infertility has to do with detailed history. Okay. If you have a detailed history, you would know how to go about every other thing. Mm -hmm. So the history involves, for both of them, it involves 
the frequency of sexual intercourse, mm -hmm. the duration of the infertility, the use of contraception, this is for the woman, the use of contraception during the period of trying, and then the menstrual history for the woman. So the menstrual history will give us an idea if she has any reproductive diseases that she has not discovered yet. Okay. So if the period is too heavy, it could be that she has a uterine fiber somewhere. If um, the period is painful, it could be that she has endometriosis or adenomyosis. If the period is not regular, it could be that she has anovulatory issues in seen in polycystic ovarian syndrome. Okay. Women who have it do not ovulate every month. Okay. So as a result of that, when you ask questions, when you take the history, you would be able to deduce yes. that from the history. If she tells you, oh, I see my period every three months, you can understand that, okay, something is There's going something. on somewhere. And then her past gynecological history as well, and the history of conception, like I already mentioned. Past gynecological history would go around the past infections that she's had so if she's been told before if she's been exposed to a sexually transmitted diseases that was treated in the past yes. it could be that it was not properly treated she which said. is leading to the reason why she's coming for fertility checks also her past obstetric history which would take in which would consider all the pregnancies she has had whether the ones that were carried to term the ones that were terminated voluntarily and the ones that ended in miscarriage yes you would have to know what happened throughout the pregnancy yes. and then when she delivered the baby you would have to know how she delivered the baby if it was through cesarean section and why it was through cesarean section so all this will guide you because the surgeries that are done on the uterus mm -hmm. as well can lead to problems with infertility yes with because when you do surgeries on the when you perform surgeries either to remove um, fibroids or to remove a pelvic mass after the surgery the formation of adhesions and these adhesions are scars that form on the uterine lining mm -hmm. and it can make it difficult for implantation to take place in the endometrial lining of the yes. uterus. So all these things are taken into consideration. So for the men, just like you've asked, for the men you ask about the um, infection yeah. of the genital tract, if yes. they've also been exposed to sexually transmitted diseases before, if they've been, um, if they've done any genital sur surgery before, so genital tract surgery means that if they've repaired for orchidopexy, like I mentioned earlier, maybe mm -hmm. they had undescended testes as a child and it was repaired, this could also um, in add up to yes. issues with infertility. Then some men have something called varicocele. Varicocele is the enlargement of the pampiniform flexus. Now this is a vein, a complex network of veins that form mm -hmm. the testicular vein. In men who have had this and have had surgeries on this, it can also reduce the infertility because before then they might have problems with sperm formation. Mm. After the surgery it might even become worse, that okay. there might be an obstruction and people who fall under this category mm. might need assisted form of reproductive technique to help them get the sperm out of the testes which is called ICSI it will help them get the sperm out of the testes the spermatic tissues would yes. be what they will use to get the sperm out in order to fertilize the egg of the woman okay so um, can it be cured or reversed it depends on the cause of the infertility okay if it is age it cannot be reversed of course Good. so if it is um, issues with an ovulation where women do not ovulate every month mm -hmm. they can give them medications to help them induce in um, they call it ovulation induction so they okay. help them stimulate the ovulation if it has as a result of lack of awareness whereby the husband lives in maybe Kano the wife lives in Abuja yes. and he only comes once a week when they come in and they're counseled about the frequency of sexual intercourse, yes. in those couples, they may be lucky enough to be able to achieve conception on their own. Yes. But in people who have damage to the endometrial lining, either as a result of complication of surgery, mm -hmm. either as a result of post abortal complication, you know, when they do dilation and curettage, maybe yes. there was a puncture somewhere, yes. people like that, it is not reversible. Their treatment option would might be surrogacy, mm -hmm. where someone else would have to carry, carry all the uterine transplantation in cases of okay. uh, in advanced countries. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Please don't touch your dial. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Health Matters and Liberty, and I have Dr. Amina Asani, and we're discussing infertility so moving on doctor yes. 
Um, what are the treatment options for people who are diagnosed with any of these forms of infertility? Well, uh, they can use drugs. Okay. In people who have an ovulatory issues, mm -hmm. women who do not ovulate. Yes. So they can stimulate the um, ovulation, which is called ovulation induction. Mm -hmm. And after that, they will time the period of sexual intercourse with their husband. Yeah. And some women get lucky that they get pregnant afterwards. Also, it can be for those who have a damage to the uterus or a, um, damage to the endometrial lining, they might have to do surrogacy or uterine transplantation. But for those who... And these are options. Yes, these are options. But it is not readily explored in this region. It yes. is a result of religious beliefs. Of course. And, and also for women who may be unexplained cause of infertility or those who just have maybe as a result of age, so the ovarian reserve has been really diminished. Mm -hmm. In them, there is something called IVF, the in vitro fertilization with embryo oh, okay. transfer. So in women of this who fall into this category, they can assist in fertilizing outside. So if there's a problem with the eggs, mm -hmm. well, they can be use of egg donors and then they help with the sperm of the husband fertilize yes. on the outside and then return it back into the uterus for fertilization to take place. Same thing for men. Men can also go through procedures called ICSI mm -hmm. to help them extract the sperm in those who have obstruction at the upper level yes. who cannot produce, although they ejaculate, but there is nothing in the semen. Yes. So they can help them with ICSI. And also for men who don't have sperm at all, then they would also have to explore donor sperm, which in this region it is not readily explored, yes. but donor sperm helps as well. At okay. least people get to achieve what okay. they want to achieve. So how can we avoid even, how can it be avoided generally? Avoiding the risk factors. Okay, basically. Basically. So don't smoke. Don't, don't drink. drink. <laughs> Try as much as possible to get married early, yes. although it's not easy because these days we want to chase our yes, career, but at least try as much as possible to get married early and also treat, develop the habit of visiting the doctor when you have infection. Yes, so, so I was coming to that. On that, are there treatments, are there checkups that one can go for to make sure your, everything is okay with you and this type of things can be detected on time? Well, it would... We don't really, I wouldn't say checkups. I okay. would say, yes, you can, as a woman, if you know that you're advancing in age, mm -hmm. you could go for a hormone profile just okay. to keep in check to know if, your whole, if the ovarian reserve is still in place. You can go for ovarian uh, for checkups to know if the ovarian reserve is still in place. Also, you can the man can go for seminal fluid analysis to check if his if the sperm is yes. still of good quality. Yes. Aside from that, you can walk into the hospital if you feel any pain. You really don't have to wait mm, until yes. it's you're getting really to, bad or mm -hmm. you're trying to have a child. Yes. You can walk into the hospital and say, "Oh, doctor, I would like to do a, an assessment of my reproductive system." Sure or assessment of fertility and they would run all the tests for you whether yes. or not you're trying to get pregnant. Quite simply, the largest, most expensive, most powerful, and arguably the most controversial dam in all of history. Today, we take you to China, to the Three Gorges Dam. It's 10 years now since the massive project was completed. Imagine this 185 meters high. That's the equivalent of a building of more than 60 floors. And it is two kilometers long, the reservoir behind it, covering 1,000 square kilometers. 
The idea for it is steeped in history. The father of the Chinese revolution, Sun Yat-sen, dreamt of it right back in 1919. Work, though, did not start until 1994, after a series of fierce debates. It's certain that the dam has made transport far easier. Flooding of the Yangtze River is easier to regulate, and it produces massive amounts of electricity. But the dam was incredibly expensive, 23 billion euros. And it brought, critics say, catastrophic human consequences. Nearly 1.5 million people displaced to make way for the monster. To add to the distress, there are also huge environmental concerns. Even as it was being built, experts were already also warning of the ecological impact of the dam, the destruction of the ecosystem, the wiping out of entire animal species from the region, and the acceleration of natural disasters. Sad to say, they've been proved right. As you'll see, witnesses are rare, and to investigate what has happened, incredibly difficult. Antoine Verdi, Angelique Forger, and Charlie Wang revisit the Three Gorges Dam for France 24. These newlyweds want to celebrate their union in a spectacular fashion. They've chosen a mass wedding. These 28 couples are getting married at the same time in a prime location, at the foot of the Three Gorges Dam that was inaugurated 10 years ago, a potent symbol that's brought them from all over China. The hydraulic dam is also strong on patriotic pride. The Chinese structure doesn't hold back on superlatives. It's the biggest, the most powerful, and most expensive dam in the world. This couple want their love story to be forever linked to this example of Chinese greatness. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. This wedding ceremony is very meaningful and it's different from usual weddings. Generally, only friends and family are invited to take part. But here it's like we're getting married in front of the entire Chinese people. We're here in front of this dam and in front of this great river to promise our eternal love to each other. This concrete giant has gone down in history as China's biggest building project of the 20th century. Ten years on, it has fulfilled its aim to control the flow of the Yangtze River and increase electricity production. In an unprecedented feat, it produces as much hydroelectric energy per year as would 15 nuclear reactors. Thanks to the dam, the area's inhabitants have seen their lives transformed. Power cuts are now a thing of the past. For the country's leadership, the dam is a monument to China's prowess. On an inspection tour of the Three Gorges Valley two years ago, Chinese President Xi Jinping celebrated the project's success with the site's workers. The Three Gorges Dam is a symbol. We could only rely on ourselves to see this project through. I'm very happy to be here and to be able to witness it. Just like everyone here, I've gained in confidence. But such a gigantic structure also has its share of controversy. Entire valleys were flooded during construction. In total, 1.4 million people had to leave their lands and property to make way for the edifice. 400 kilometers from the dam in an upriver valley, this retired farmer was one of the first people to be displaced. He chose to remain anonymous. Even 30 years after the project began, the dam remains a painful topic. My house was right there next to the bamboo. My 